Fred, in trying to understand the cosmology of the universe, normally people focus on the beginning, how did things begin? Uh, you've looked at the end of the universe, which seems to be more difficult, more amorphous. What do we mean, first of all, by the end of the universe? Well, what I mean by the end of the universe is simply to take everything that we know about the laws of physics today and everything we know about the state of the universe today and use the equations of motion to study what will happen into the future. We think we know the laws of physics, or at least to a good approximation, so it only makes sense to take them out on the road and see how far they go. Okay, and, and uh, what's to prevent them just from going on things forever the way we're going now, the kind of the naive, simple approach. Why, why do they lead to the fact that the universe will end? Why do you even use that term? Well, saying the universe is um, going to end is really a, a misnomer. What really happens isn't that the universe itself ends, but rather all of the astrophysical objects that make it up will go through life cycles, and those life cycles will all end in a death-like closure. Okay, so let's understand. Now, you've talked about five ages of the universe, so let's go through the, the stages quickly, but focus on the ones at the end. Okay, well, the first age is just the primordial era. That's when the universe is born, and the only thing that is um, contained in the universe are particles. That age ends when the first stars form. So this spans from when the Big Bang moment itself up until when the universe is millions of years old, whenever the first generation of stars form. Okay. So that takes us into the second era, which is called the Stelliferous Era. Stelliferous simply means filled with stars. stars. If you look out in the sky, you see stars. That's where we are. And that's where we are. In fact, most of the energy that's being generated in the universe today is generated by nuclear fusion and mm -hmm. stars. Mm -hmm. So it turns out the stars don't last forever and they can't be made forever. The universe will eventually run out of gas to make new stars, mm -hmm. and the stars that we have will eventually burn out. Mm -hmm. So after the universe is about 100 trillion years old or so, all of the stars will be gone, as in they will no longer be shining, and then the universe changes its character quite abruptly, and we enter into the next era. The next era is called the degenerate era, <laughs> and it's called degenerate because the objects that are left after stellar evolution has run its course are degenerate stellar remnants. These are things that you've heard of, mostly white dwarfs, also neutron stars, and brown dwarfs. So this is what, uh, 10 to the f uh, 14th years? Yeah, beyond 10 to the 14 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so now, and then how long does that, the degenerate uh, age last? Well, we don't know exactly, but the degenerate era will last as long as there are degenerate objects, and the degenerate objects last as long as the protons last. Oh, okay. We think that protons will eventually decay, mm -hmm. and when they decay, those objects will leave the um, universe, and the only stellar-like bodies remaining will be black holes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Black holes will then inherit the universe. <laughs> so that takes us to the fourth era, which is the black hole era. Now, when we take inventory of the black hole era, you can say, well, what is there, right? Well, there is a great big black hole in the middle of every galaxy called a supermassive black hole. Mm -hmm. Our galaxy has a million solar mass black hole. Some galaxies have um, black holes as large as a billion solar masses. Now, in addition to the supermassive black holes, stellar evolution will produce some stellar mass black mm -hmm. holes. These are typically about 10 stellar or 10 solar radii. These black holes are typically about 10 solar masses. And each galaxy the size of the Milky Way will produce on the order of a million of them. Mm -hmm. We don't know that number precisely, right. but order of mm -hmm. magnitude a million. So that's your inventory. Yeah. Each galaxy gives you one big one and a million <laughs> smaller ones. Right. And they will shine. They will be the brightest things in the sky at this time in the future universe. Shine is a relative term here. <laughs> yes, it is. They will be actually generating energy through Hawking evaporation. Right, which is extremely uh, small. It's an extremely low temperature, low energy, long term quantum process. Quantum fluctuation kind of thing. Due yeah. to quantum fluctuations near the event horizon of a black hole. Right. And that process over time will eventually drain the mass out of the black holes. So the black holes will literally evaporate, losing their mass getting hotter as they do so, and eventually making their explosive exits from the universe. Mm. And so at that final point, when they make their explosive exit, what, what is that event? What is happening then? Well, it's just that the universe is getting old enough that the very largest black holes have had time to die. Now, and, and what does die mean for that final and, black hole? And die black simply hole? means finishing the evaporation process so the black hole no longer exists as a black hole. Okay, so It's what, turned all of its mass energy into photons and other radiation. And you're saying it's getting hotter? Yes. And, and is there an explosive event or it just just, just uh, evaporates away? Well, it evaporates away, but it, since the evaporation process accelerates, 
the final moments of a black hole's evaporation is very much like a nuclear bomb going off because uh, there's that much energy released in such a short amount of time. Right, and it's all photons. It's, it's, well, it's, 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 it's mostly photons, yeah. it's some neutrinos. In the very, very, very last instance, when the temperature gets hot enough, it can then radiate more massive particles. Oh, because they, the, 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 the heat enables it. The, yeah, the there's more, enough energy in, uh -huh. in, the, in, the, in the heat bath to produce larger particles. And then and, but that does not last very long. Yeah. And then after that happens, all the black holes are gone and we enter into this fifth and final era that we call the dark era because there's not that much left. Yeah, what is left at that point? Well, it's basically the leftover dregs of all the other astrophysical processes that happened in history. Right. So we have leftover dark matter particles, we have leftover electrons and positrons, we have lots of colossal sized photons, and we have probably neutrinos. And as the universe continues to expand, because we think dark energy is the energy of empty space and expands, uh, those, the distances between particles is, is getting long, bigger and bigger. It's getting bigger and bigger and it's getting, um, it, the expansion is accelerating, right, right. provided that the dark energy remains constant or right. at least yeah, we, doesn't change too fast. Right. So that the universe is becoming ever emptier. So that's kind of the story of the universe. We start with particles. Then we build structures, we have stars, we have de degenerate objects, we have black holes. And then at the very end, we're back to particles. So it's dust getting to dust. Getting further and further apart. Getting further and further apart. So it's dust to dust, ashes to ashes, particles to particles. Okay. And that's the story of our universe. Okay.